Some exchange betting companies run short-lived promotions, like months-long offers of low commission. At BetDAG, we wanted to change the way we did things, so we set our commission at 2% permanently. That's 2% on football, horse racing, golf, almost any sport. 2%. That's just one way that BetDAG is changing for the better. For the better, like you. BetDAG, the 2% commission exchange. Over 18s only, please gamble responsibly. Welcome back to the Rogue Report podcast. Johnny and Graham coming to you from the Academy of Light. How are you, Graham? I'm all right, tired. You came from Scotland today, didn't you? I did, I. So just, just for George. Oh, what a pleasure. <laughs> well, cool. spoiler alert, uh, George, <laughs> Captain George Honeyman is here with us today from the Academy. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So, we'll start right at the beginning, shall we? Um, okay. You were raised in Prudhoe. Yeah, that is uh, correct. So, that's a Newcastle area, is it not? It is. Yeah, it's thoroughly Newcastle area, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, how do you support Sunderland? Uh, well, I grew up from the age of five, with my dad being a, a massive Newcastle fan, and uh, my mum being a massive Sunderland fan. So, it was always a split household. Um <laughs> one of Mary's reasons that not together anymore, but <laughs> um, but um, no. So I grew I grew up till about the age of eight, um, being split between the two. But obviously, being my dad, I was probably mainly in Newcastle, being from where I am. Um, but then obviously joined the Sunderland when I was ten, and uh, okay. things quickly changed for me. Um, so we always a midfielder. Um, no, to be to be honest, when I was group, when I was playing a uh, pretty youth club for my uh, boys' club, um, I was more of a striker, sort of like off the striker. Mm. Um, played on the wing a lot. Never really played in centre midfield up until about sixteen, when uh, start playing it for school for the county and then a little bit for the uh, academy sides as well. Okay, so do you score a lot of goals? I did score a lot of goals. Uh, yeah. I remember the record season for me last season at Pretty Youth was, uh, I think I got 51, so I was like chuffed to get over the 50. Okay. I know, but like, I mean, we were playing against like Farmer Sons and all that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I look back at it now and think, yeah, maybe it wasn't uh, the, the biggest achievement, but yeah, it was good. Um, a lot of people have been asking me this, so obviously you're quite a versatile midfielder. Yeah. Thing, but what's your preferred position? My preferred position? I think... Because I've grew up sort of playing in the number 10, I think I love playing in the the sort of num- more attacking midfield sort of position. Mm-hmm. But if I'm being brutally honest, as long as I see my name on the team sheet, mm-hmm. I don't care where I play. I just want to be... And the manager knows that as well. As long as I'm playing, you'll, I'll never complain. The only time where I've been... Went on the pitch for Sunderland, thinking a bit... Not that I don't want to play there, but really nervous is when I played wing-back against Sheffield United last year. And okay. uh, I never played there in my life, and that was something that I did not enjoy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were in the academy, um, is there any anyone senior player that you looked up to, particularly for advice when coming through the ranks? Yeah, definitely. I think um, being really lucky here at Sunderland that we've always had, a, I felt, a good core in terms of uh, people for advice. It was uh, Katz was has been massive for me. Shazy, uh, Bard. Bardo when I was coming through because when I was coming through uh, when I, when we just used to go and train mm. every so often I was always playing on the left against Bar, uh, Bardo on sort of like youth team versus first team game sort of thing mm. and it was sort of always known that it would be a good scrap between me and him would always end up not getting in a fight but always having a good tussle and not argument on the pitch and you know that made us feel like that was a proper first team sort of experience and, and I, I felt good off it and I think the, the first team squad more respected me for, from doing that and not just laying over and kept going back at them. So um, I've had a lot of very good people around us so far at Sunderland, mm. which I'm very honoured to have. Um, it must feel surreal, though, having Lee Catamull in the same team as you now. Yeah, it does. Um, as well. Yeah, I think it's what definitely helps is that we're, quite, we're pretty good friends off the pitch. Um, so that made... Makes everything easier, do you know what I mean? I think if I, if we didn't get along off the pitch or whatever, it would be a bit, oh, not in awe, because I'm not that sort of lad, but it would be a bit weird. But um, in terms of him now playing on the same pitch as them, I, I just lo- love it, to be fair. It's, it's, a, it's a great experience and something that 
you know, whatever happens, I will ho- always have this ex- experience. Absolutely. Uh, so, was there ever a plan B, though? If football didn't perhaps work out the way you wanted, was there ever something else you were thinking of? <sighs> Before I turned 16, yeah, there was. Like, I, w- I was all right at school and... Um, I mean, originally when I was about six years old, I wanted to be a baker because I love the smell of bread so much, but that never really uh, transpired. Uh, but to be honest, and it's not a, this isn't good advice for any sort of young professional coming up, but in my head, I always had that sort of determination that I was going to make it no matter what and always focused my football on, always focused on my football more than anything else, like beyond belief. So, um I always felt the time that I put in to try and be a professional player, even if it didn't come to that it would be at Sunderland, I would have a career mm-hmm. somewhere. So uh, was maybe if I, I don't know, had a son or whatever and he was in the same position, I wouldn't advise because there's so many uncontrollables to become a footballer. Mm-hmm. But I also know that I wouldn't be here where I am today if I didn't do, do sacrifice all that for it. Of course. Is there any other sports that you quite enjoy? Yeah, I was... Uh, Actually really good at cricket growing up. Um, it sort of became a choice when I was 14 uh, when whether I wanted to go play cricket or play football. Uh, I was a wicketkeeper batsman for Northumberland, my county, and um, I got to a stage where I literally didn't have a, a see my friends or my family. I was training every night either at Sunderland at the academy or going through the cricket. Um, so it became a bit too much and uh, decided, I mean, it was always going to be football, really, like and more, more my kind of people. You uh, first came on the first team when you came in 2015 against Bradford in the FA Cup. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what it was like seeing your name on the team sheet when George Honeyman on the Southern team sheet? Yeah, it was a bit surreal, to be honest, because I hadn't even trained properly. with a, like I'd been involved and sort of like when all the lads went over, mm-hmm. but there had been a couple of lads who had been trained regularly with the first team. Um, and then I just remember Gus uh, Poye pulled me in the corridor one day after, after lunch and asked me what squad number I'd like. Mm-hmm. Uh, a choice out of the 30s, and I said 39. And... Um, it sort of like became, oh my God, does that mean that I'm going to be involved in, in, the, in, the, in the game tomorrow? Mm-hmm. I uh, was on the bench and uh, I, for some reason, even though it was the first time I've been on the bench, hand trained, I sort of knew I was going to come on. And uh, I wish it was longer because I only came on for a couple of minutes. But mm-hmm. even looking back at it now, like it was so surreal. I mean, I know it wasn't a great game. Like obviously we got beat, but that atmosphere was amazing. We another sold out away and... and I just kept thinking that this is exactly what I want. I can't wait for more of it. Yeah. Um, and you obviously had a brief loan spell at Gates. I did, your time. yeah. Um, is there anything that you learned during your time there which you still use today? Definitely. Um, that had come off the patch of a, of a probably a rough couple of years for me in terms of we'd had a lot of change of managers. So as a young player, it was always really hard because once you start impressing one manager, it seemed that he would get sacked and you'd start all over again trying to impress mm-hmm. another manager. Um, at the start of that year, pre-season, um, I got told I was going away with the first team for the first time, so I was really looking forward to that. Didn't end up going, then the next day got a stress fracture in my back. Um, so I was out for four months with that, and then I came back and I was starting to play for the reserves again, and I was thinking, in the last year of my contract, I think it was 20, 21 at the time, so it was like, right, I really need to start playing some football if I'm going to have my career as a footballer. Yeah. Uh, Gateshead uh, came in and were like, we want you to come for us for a month. We have like 10, 12 games and uh, come play. And I was like, brilliant. That's exactly what I need. Go get back up to speed after my injury. And uh, I have to say, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Like, mm-hmm. it made me, you know, he, I, I absolutely love this football club and love the academy and everything, but it did show that, like, it's a different world, like Gates said, and, and, you know, simple things such as, like, like I for five years, I never even had to go take home and wash my kit. Do you know what I mean? And and that that sounds, like, so, like, big-headed or whatever, but you just, it just becomes the norm and you, you don't even realise it. And all of a sudden, I'm training every day for Gateshead and I've got two sets of kits. I'm living by with me mate and I'm thinking well I've got to get the washing on every day now do you know what I mean like I mean, it's, it's simple things like that and you, you just take it for granted and not because like you're a bad person or anything just because that's that's how it becomes and I think for every young lad to have a spell away from 
the the comfort of the academy or playing reserve team games is vital. Don't get us wrong, I think it can go the other way and be out on loan too much and get lost. But that experience at Gate said was was vital for me career and if it made one thing was that, you know, made us want to make it at Sunderland even more because I was thinking, no disrespect to Gateshead or the lads there or whatever, but I don't want to play at this level. Like, I want to I want to play at Sunderland. I want, I, want, I want to make it like to the very top. Um, so I've got one more question then, hand to Graham. But no problem. So you noted your first goal uh, last season against Bury. Yeah. Um, is there a, a weight off your shoulders when you get that first goal? Definitely. I think, do you know, like in that sort of when you're a young lad coming through, you count down sort of all the things. So when's my first start? When's my first... Uh, appearance at home when's my first home goal do you know what I mean so that was my first goal for Sunderland and it's it's weird because through my sort of Sunderland career at the start and the youth team and stuff sometimes you think it might never happen it might so it it made us enjoy it even more because I'd went through I think a little bit more to get there and uh, at times it looked impossible for me and it was yeah. just it is a weight off your shoulders, but it shouldn't how it's feel. It's more just like pure joy, just because you're thinking, well, this is what I've been working at since I was ten year old to go score a goal for Sunderland, and then it was the Carabao Cup it was the first round. We got knocked out two rounds later, or whatever. But you know that I will take that feeling till the day I die. That that first goal for Sunderland. So yeah, we're going to move on to Graham now, who's going to talk more about this season. No problem. Aye, we'll, we'll miss out the middle bit at the end of last season. That relegation will go straight on to positive things. No problem. So we'll move straight to Jack Ross. The first thing I wanted yeah. to ask, obviously, the club captain. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, brilliant achievement. But I remember looking myself at who was at the club at that point and thinking who could be captain. You had Jack Baldwin, former captain, Glenn Leuven's former captain. Both, well, Glenn Leuven's very experienced. You had yeah. Catam all as well. Um, Jack put his trust in you. Yeah. Um, why do you feel he chose you and how proud are you that he did? Um, I feel like he chose me just because I think in terms of for football and captain and slightly different to, in terms of other sports like cricket or whatever, I think football and captain is a lot about lean by example, trying to do everything right every yeah. day, how you're training standards, you're playing standards. And um, I've spoken to him since and, and he... He said he made his mind up after the first couple of days that he's seen me. I, I mean, we were just running there, so he's obviously seen me at my best <laughs> anyway. Um, but I, I always felt like, even though I was relatively inexperienced in terms of footballing, from last year, I felt I took on a, a much bigger responsibility than maybe maybe I probably should have, but that was how it was. And I felt... You know, I felt like I'd played five seasons for Sunderland after yeah. last year, never mind just th- that one season. So I always felt like coming into the year, I didn't I didn't expect to get the captaincy in a full-time role at all, but I felt like I'm going to be one. I felt almost like a senior player coming back. I yeah. didn't feel relatively inexperienced, so I felt I'm very comfortable in my skin like that. And, you know, I it, the Darlington was the first pre-season game and we were sort of swapping players around and uh, I didn't, didn't play that game. And then the next game when the other lads played, I seen the armband on my peg at Hartlepool. And that that feeling, again, with the first goal, I know it was only a pre-season game at Hartlepool and everyone will forget about it. But to me, that was one of the biggest moments of my career. And just leading that team up to Hartlepool um, was something that, again, I'll never forget. And if someone had told me then, like, okay, that's going to be your one captaincy this year or whatever, then at that time I would have been like, oh, as long as I've done it once, do you know what I mean? Again, like yeah. I'm more I like more unhappy with that, but you, you know what it's like in anything. Once you have it once, you want it more. And, and yeah, of course. He, he, the, the manager never really spoke to me about it. I, I just every preseason game I kept coming and I kept coming and with the armband and I was loving it that much and I loved the responsibility. But at the same time, I know football's got a funny funny way of biting you on the arse, do you know what yeah, I mean, when you least expect it. So yeah. I never let myself think, right, well, that's the job done or whatever. I kept thinking, I'm going to do everything I normally do, going to keep trying to prove why I should be. But if it doesn't, I will be fully behind anyone else. And it's been a great experience for me going forward in my career. And then I think a week before, the, uh, or a couple of weeks before the season, the manager pulled me in the office and 
And he asked me if I wanted to be captain. I almost laughed because I'm like, yeah. well, you don't have to ask, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously that was his, his way of doing it. And I couldn't say yes quick enough. And, you know, the sort of rise from being a reserve team player to being club captain has been pretty quick. But, you know, I don't feel phased by it at all. I feel immensely proud, like, if I think how I felt scoring my first goal for, for Sunderland to now how I'm being made club captain, like... It's just amazing, like especially when I come, I walk around the building that I've spent more than half my life in yeah. the training ground, and I'm just, I'm really appreciative of the people that have helped me get here through the the academy, the the lucky people I've had to work with at the club, and you know that'll never that'll never leave us, and and it's something that um, you know, whatever happens, that it is an amazing achievement and something that I, I really like. I don't want to be just a club captain for Sunderland. I, yeah. I've got motivations to try and be the best club captain for Sunderland, yeah, which is huge, huge, you know, um, it probably might never happen, but I'm always one of those where aim for the stars and then if you don't reach them, you're still done all yeah. right. So, you know, um, I'm very lucky to have had uh, Bawley, obviously, as, as my youth team and reserve team coach, who was one of, the, one of if not, not the club's best captain. So I've got a very lucky mentor in that role and, you know, I want to be better than him, like, and yeah. he and he knows that, and I would tell that to his face. And it's not like it's not a dig against him; it's not a no, dig not against cool. any other club captains. But that's like when you when you're lucky enough to be a, a captain of a club like Sunderland, you know, you want to leave your mark on it. Do yeah, you know I mean? of course. Um, individually and as a club, yeah. What were your aims for this season, and how do you feel? How close do you feel you are on target to achieve them, or do you feel you're on target? Um, yeah, what I loved about. Uh, our manager when he came in because obviously it was a bit of a uh, sort of I think no one knew what was going on at the club new owners new manager yeah. was a lot of comings and goings and um, what I loved about Agatha came in his first meeting was our, our target is to win the league this year and I thought that's great because last year when we came in after getting relegated from the Premiership no one really said what our target was or what this and ultimately that was one of our downfalls I think at the start, we're thinking, oh, well, we've got relegated. We have a right to go straight back up, but yeah. not at all. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So um, our target is to win the win the league this year. And I think, yeah, I, 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 there's, there was a lot of talk last month about, obviously, the draws, which, yeah, at this stage of season, draws are not, not good enough at all. But I think we, like, we have gave ourselves such an incredible foundation for now to go on and kick on and go win this league and go win the Checker Trade Cup, which when you think like the previous seasons where we haven't gave ourselves a, a foot to stand in and, and every last three months has been of the seasons have been, right, we really need to get this together. Well, we've had a really successful season so far. We're the yeah. only team that have been up and around the top three all year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the draws last month weren't, weren't great, but for, for us to turn it around in a way that we've only lost twice this season unbeaten at home you know it's a far cry from last year and I know it's league one I know that uh, we, we have to get out of this division like there's no it's never been hidden from that but I think we're massively on target because we have such a good competitive squad and we've gave ourselves such a great foundation to now go on and go on at that another little run that will take us because what I love about our squad is everyone wants the same thing. Everyone has got a point to prove. If we don't get promoted this year, then it's a massive, um, it's a massive scalp against everyone's name because yeah, you go through the whole squad. Every people are coming off back to back relegations, single relegations, have come to a big club for the first time. Do you know what I mean? You go through the whole squad. Everyone's got a point to prove. So I think that is always massively in our favour. Talking of the club in general, and it's funny you mentioned what you just said there about um, where we're at as a club mm -hmm. with the, the draws and people kind of like looked at that and stuff but how we give ourselves a foundation I think there's a big change in the feeling of the club compared to like last season even when we are maybe having those inverted yeah. commas negative draw like yeah, moments yeah. but when did you feel like because the fans feel it and I'm sure the players do but which moment was it this season that made you feel like this is like a new summer probably the very first game of the season to be honest um you know, obviously, last-minute winners are, are massive game changers. It's like the most obvious thing in football. But I think even when Charlton scored that game, 
it didn't have that same feel. You know, last season when when yeah. we went when we conceded a goal, it was like as if the pitch was caving in, and you know, so, uh, some lads just can't handle it. Like it, that's just how it is, and obviously. The whole new manager, new owners, new sort of feel around. Oh, it's always going to have a new feel when when there's new yeah. owners and new manager and nearly a whole new playing squad. And I I, I think from the first game, I remember saying I'd I'd Matthews in the night. There's a nice photo of us uh, coming off the pitch, and because the club had been sort of been getting a reputation where I think among like players that tough place to go play at Sunderland in terms of for Sunderland never yeah. mind come play I think it was a nice place for oppositions to come to Sunderland but, oh yeah, yeah, yeah um, sure. in terms of actually playing for Sunderland it's like don't know if you'd fancy that like it's real tough and I remember just saying see this place can be this place can be rocking or this 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 is how it should be or yeah, whatever and I think since then obviously we've had our ups and downs the, lo- the losses against Burton and stuff like that um but from then, I think there's always been a sense of, you know, this is this is how it should feel. This is this is the right direction that the football club should be going in, and that since then, I've I've always felt that it, it's it's had a change, um, just a, just a change in sort of like it. It feels like, and I know now that the squad are loving playing at home. Yeah. We love playing. Like, think we got a home game class last season. Got a home game. We're thinking. It's like playing a double away game sort of thing. Yeah. It's like it's like a double negative sort of thing, and it's like, why why is that a case? But obviously there's a hundred and one things going on, but that's just the way it was. And now to how it is now is a massive success in itself. Talking about good moments this season, yeah. One of my favourites was the Walsall game, mainly right, okay. because of your celebration. <laughs> right, Dino. okay, yeah. yeah what okay. was the story behind that? Well. Um, he he scored. Was it the second, the second goal? The second got, goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was already like. I mean, everyone was pretty riled up because of the like. Max didn't wasn't ascending off. They scored second, but he, in his second goal, even though he hadn't been getting any stick whatsoever, he just ran over to our fans across the other side and stood in front of them. And I just thought, no, I'm not having that. Like you've got you you you're at home. You're in front of all your fans. Like you're playing against ten men. Yeah, lucky enough that you're playing against ten of us. So don't start giving it the big in, in like just because you're playing Sunderland and and we'll give you the, the another top attendance. Like every club we go to, yeah. like it's their set, it's their biggest attendance for the for the season. So, I, to be honest, I'm glad he did do it because it, if anything, it was motivation for us to go come yeah. back and win because it it definitely got Mike back up and I think it got everyone else's back up because. You know, don't start giving it the big end because you're playing against Sunderland. Like, are you doing this week in, week out when you play against other clubs when there's 500 people there watching you? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it just stuck in my mind when 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 he scored when he when he did that, and then obviously when we drew two two. I, I, and I don't like watching it back because I'm thinking, oh, I, I look <laughs> look like look like a like right little divvy, but. Uh, but yeah, it was just pure, like, it just came it. out of us and I was thinking, do you know what, mate, I have a bit of that, you've been at it all game, like, and that, uh, yeah. I recommend you do it again. <laughs> no, um, no, no. So I've got, I've got one more quick one for you then. We've got five minutes of Twitter questions, if that's all no right No problem. Um, we're not there yet, and I know that, yeah. but we've still got to beat Bristol Rovers, which I'm confident of. Yeah. Um, but do you think leading Sunderland out of Wembley would be your proudest moment to date? Uh, definitely, but I don't want to. If we get there, I don't want to just leave them out. I want to be holding a trophy at, at Wembley. That is uh, that is the dream. But as I say, and as you alluded to, there's a job to go do at Bristol first before I start. Let me uh, dreams go a bit wild, like. But um, no, to say that I haven't thought about it slightly is a is a bit of a lie. To be honest, when um, when I was out injured with my ankle and. Uh, there was a bit of stuff going on and I wasn't sure how long it was going to be but I thought if I miss the chance to be at a final with Sunderland at Wembley like I will never live it down so yeah. um, no as I say we've got a job to do on Tuesday to get there but uh, it's something that I'm very much looking forward to if we get there yeah. good we've got a few really basic Twitter questions for you no problem Fire away. Um, so 97 underscore JBO, don't know what that stands for, <laughs> says, have you ever seen Luke Unai and not smiling? No, he is a very happy person, to be honest. I thought the happiest person I ever met was Duncan Watmore, um, <laughs> but he, he's came in and rivaled him, absolutely. Uh, 
I'm not sure what he's happiest doing, like whether it's swimming, playing football, <laughs> you what, but he, he, he is a happy bloke. He was apparently at the pub quiz last night. Was he? Yeah. Somewhere. I, I honestly don't, don't even notice. want to comprehend what he gets up to like that way, yeah. Um, also, we have. Do you have any match day superstitions? <sighs> no. Do you know what? Not nothing. The only thing I do, and I don't even know why I do it, because I just like feeling fired up. Is just a couple high knees when I go on the pitch, but that is about it. Like if something happened or I didn't do something, I I wouldn't be like overly like thinking, oh, I can't play. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. nah, but pretty boring answer. But that's <laughs> the one. I put like, the left boot on first, and then the right. Nah. Boot. Do you know what? Nah. <laughs> You're not like me then. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm just, I always just think like, well, what, what difference is that going to make? But yeah, I've, it's just a total mentality thing. Isn't yeah. It? Um, it's a really obvious question, this one. Okay. And I didn't, I don't know if I wanted to ask it, but I'm going to ask it anyway because okay. I'm curious. Elliot C, I don't know what that stands for. Um, who's got the best banter in the dressing room? The best banter? Oh, obvious why? Who do you think, who, who do you think it is? Aidan McGeady. Aidan McGeady. Right, okay. Aidos is very, like, dry sort of thing, so he will always come out with something yeah. uh, which will make me laugh every day, but I, I like Tom Flanagan, like, his, like, the, his Cockney slang, rhyme and slang, it tickles us every time, like, I love Best that. field answer, that. <laughs> yeah, I would have no, never he's said a, Tom he's Flanagan. He's a great lad, a great lad. Um, what about any um, former players? Are you in contact with any former players? Yeah, I uh, still speak to um, Billy Jones a lot, uh, Jordan Pickford and uh, John O'Shea from time to time. Um, i trying to think any others. Paddy McNair a bit as well, but don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is dead cheesy, this one. I kind of like it, you know, reading it up on the train. Come on then, what's yeah. the cheesy so one? Thomas says, a lot, of, a lot of players say something gets under your skin. One player, actually, that was now come in. Um, okay. Is it the same for you? I... I wouldn't even say that I've never had it under my skin. Um, being here since I was 10, it's all I know. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's, it's, as I say, this building, the whole place is practically my life. Like, I would, if I didn't have it, I'd, it, it would probably scare me a little bit because yeah. I just know nothing different. I know nothing different. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's under my skin. I just would say that it's probably always so been there. Been there. Yeah. Good answer, mate. Good answer. Jack Ross's knitwear, is it the best in the business? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it is like a, a GQ fashion uh, magazine. When he, when he walks in, he does have fantastic dress sense. But uh, there's a, there's been a couple like uh, questionable ones, but I with that we haven't seen them again since. Like no, but his his knitwear is good. He loves all scenes as well, doesn't he? Okay. Uh, yeah, you all. can't beat Paolo Di Canio as knitwear on the first day of that Chelsea game. Oh, probably, yeah. That. Going back anyway. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> Um, George, thanks very much for doing it, mate. It's been Appreciate an absolute it. pleasure, Thank you guys. Much, George, yes. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Some exchange betting companies run short lived promotions, like months long offers of low commission. At BetDAG, we wanted to change the way we did things, so we set our commission at 2% permanently. That's 2% on football, horse racing, golf almost any sport 2% that's just one way that BetDAC is changing for the better for the better like you BetDAC the 2% commission exchange over 18s only please gamble responsibly